I'm really excited about this particular episode because I think it's going to illuminate some astonishing facts on marathon training or marathon cramping that I don't think you've heard before. Now, a lot of people think that marathon cramping is a result of an electrolyte or hydration issue. And while that no doubt is the cause for some reason, for some runners, I don't think it's shedding a light on everything that could be going on and leading to your muscle cramps. In this video, we're going to talk about how running form, or I should say deterioration in running form, can lead to that muscle cramping in the marathon. One of the most common reasons for failure in the marathon is suffering from muscle cramps. As many seasoned marathon veterans know, these muscle cramps can also be one of the most frustrating reasons for poor performance. Typically, when you suffer from a cramp, everything else is going pretty well. The pace feels easy, you've got plenty of energy, and a new PR seems almost inevitable. Then bang, your calf cramps, and it takes everything you can just to crawl to the finish. As we've been taught to do from the billions of dollars funneled into the sports drink market every year, most runners blame a lack of fluid or electrolyte intake for their untimely cramps. So, for their next marathon, they simply work on drinking more often. Unfortunately, as many marathoners know, this rarely solves the problem. It seems no matter how often we drink or how precisely we try to optimize our electrolyte levels, that same darn calf cramp returns late in a race. This is because your marathon cramping isn't likely a hydration or electrolyte issue at all. Rather, the problem is what we call a muscle overloading or fatigue cramp. These occur when the neural mechanisms that are supposed to inhibit muscle contraction are depressed and the chemical and electrical synapses that fire the muscle fibers are enhanced. The result is an intense, sustained, involuntary muscle contraction. The question now is why do these fatigue cramps happen even after running countless training miles, tough workouts, and marathon-specific long runs? To answer this question, let's first look at an interesting study conducted by Pete Larson at the 2009 Manchester City Marathon. Using a high-speed camera, Larson filmed runners at the 10km and 32km points at the race, and later classified them according to their foot strike. At the 10k mark, his results for the 936 runners were as follows. 88.9% of them heel struck, 3.4% of them were midfoot strikers, 1.8% of them were forefoot strikers. At the 32 kilometer mark, which is about 20 miles, Larson identified 286 runners who had been previously filmed, and they displayed the following foot strikes. A 93% of them uh, posed a heel strike, compared to 87% who were also striking at 10K and none of them forefooted, forefoot struck. This brief study showed just how common it is to see a runner's form change as they get tired late in a race. I doubt this data is surprising if you've ever watched a friend push through the final 10K of a marathon. Compared to their normal running technique, their form at the end of the race can look pretty ugly. While I contend that foot strike itself is not the real issue here, this study does confirm that our running form changes late in a race. But how does this relate to muscle cramping? As we learned in the previous two videos on muscle activation and treating the cause of running injuries, your body will always compensate when one muscle group isn't working correctly by rerouting the work that needs to be done to another, to another muscle group. To quickly recap, or for those who haven't watched the first two, two videos, if your glute muscle is inhibited and not firing correctly, your leg won't simply stop working. Instead, your brain tells your muscles, hey, this glute isn't getting the job done. Let's fire the calves more forcefully to make up for the lack of power. This rerouting occurs unconsciously, and you'll never even realize it occurs. So let's look at two very specific and common examples of form breakdowns that occur late in a marathon and how they can potentially impact cramping. One of the most common issues is slouching, or leaning at the waist, as you get tired. Keeping your shoulders and chest back and your spine in a neutral position for two, three, or even four hours is a difficult task for your core, when, and by core here we mean hips, abdominals, lower back, and glutes. Most runners lack the strength to hold themselves in the optimal posture for three to four hours. As a result of this weakness, they slouch or even lean, or, or lean forward at the waist, which will tend to sit the butt backward to counterbalance the upper body's forward position. This results in overstriding, which we know is landing your, with your foot too far out in front of your center of mass, which dramatically increases the impact forces that travel up your leg as the foot lands. Overstriding also puts the hamstrings in a vulnerable position at ground contact and forces them to do more work to pull the leg through, since the glutes can't be activated as efficiently when your house is slunched over. If you suffer from frequent hamstring cramps during the marathon, I contend this is the likely cause. I believe one of the main culprits of marathon cramping, especially in the calves, is a product of reduced hip extension, which is much more difficult to recognize than slouching. 
Hip extension is the act of driving your entire upper thigh, or leg for that matter, backwards after your foot contacts the ground. The power for this movement is generated primarily from the hips and glutes, and is perhaps the single most important factor in your ability to run faster. The more powerful your hip extension, the faster you will go. As you get further into a race, the first forceful contractions required from the hip and glute muscles to sustain a fast pace become more difficult to generate. This is especially true if you went out too fast early in the race, and therefore fatigued your intermediate muscle fibers too early. To compensate for the hip and glute getting tired, the body recruits the calf and quad to help generate the power needed to main marathon pace. Since the calf and quad aren't accustomed to such a work workload, they quickly fatigue and begin to cramp. Now that we understand how form deterioration can lead to marathon cramping, how do we go about addressing this issue? Just like you need to perform core and injury prevention work to stay healthy, it's important you perform form-specific training, strength training exercises that target the mechanics that commonly deteriorate late in a race. For example, if you tend to suffer from calf or quad cramps late in a race, you'll want to perform exercises, drills, and stretches that focus on improving your hip extension. Not only will this reduce many of the limitations that may be preventing you from generating proper hip extension, these exercises will help you improve your muscular endurance and ability to generate proper hip extension late in a race when you're tired. You can download a free sample of our hip extension specific routine under this video. It is available in PDF and video format. I suggest implementing it after your harder running days, following the hard days easy, hard days hard, easy days easy philosophy. You can either add it to you can add it to your other strength workout as well if you're doing them. Adding this type of form specific work could be just what you need to prevent those late race cramps and help you reach your potential. 